Hello guys and welcome back to a Dragon Age. Um, we were told to go ahead and go get the mages, but we're gonna go search a few places here. better. That was really loud now that I got my headphones going. Alright. It is begun. Alright, new codex. The Elysian Empire. There are many lords and ladies in Valro. And I mean this literally. Once the system of nobles, titles in Olay was lam lamaranthine, uh, there was barons and baronesses and barnets and sir barons and a hold of others, each in their own origins and its own nuisance of comparison. The Elysian are Araki is ancient and much given to complexion. All the nobles play the grand game, as it's known, whether they wish to or not. It is a game of reputation and prodigy, where moves and made with rumors and scandal is the chief weapon. No gentle game this. More blood has been drawn as a result of the g grand game than any war the Elysian have fought. Of this, I am sure by almost every gentleman here. As far as the titles went, everything changed with the coming of the Empire Dracon, who established the Elysian Empire as an existence now, and who created the Chantry. There is no more Brennerate figure in Elysian in Viral. The statue of Dracon stands as tall as the statue of Andraste. Dracon determined that the grand game was a tearing Elysian apart, so he abolished all titles besides his own, and lord and lady. I am told with some twitching amusement that this action did not end the grand game as Draken intended. Now the lords and ladies collect unofficial titles rather than official ones. As such, the exiled patron of K or uncle to the champion of Tamas, it is a headache to remember such titles, and one wince to think of the poor doormen at the ball who must rattle them off as each guest enters the room. The Arcacy is different from Ferelden in other ways as well. The Olesian's right to rule steams directly from the Maker. The exit there's exist exits neither the concept of rules or myth nor the slightest notion of rebellion. If one is not noble, one is aspired to be, or at least aspires to be in a good graces of a noble, and is ever watching for a way to enter the prodigy of those better placed in the grand game. And then there are the masks and the cosmetics. I have not seen so much paint since the kennels at High Ever, but 
that is another story. From Beyond the Frostback by Ban Turk of the West Hills 920 Dragon. Okay. I believe that's it in this one. Let's go ahead and climb up. I here. shall do it. Okay. Main floor. It shall be done. Very well. Shall be done. Tranquil. Some laugh at me. I no longer mind. Once upon a time, I studied as they did. I learned and understand the toilage of the enchanter and attempted to master the art of bending magic to my will. And while I did well enough, I know that I struggled. I saw the way the enchanters looked at me, the side long glances of weary and disappointment. While other apprentices were conjuring fire, I could barely light a candle. I was frightened of magic. When I was a little boy, my grandmother regarded me with tales of terrible Flemeth, the, the witch of the wilds. She told me of the magisters and how their evil magic infested the world with the dark spawn. She told me of demons and how they were drawn to the dreams of those who possess magic like moss to a flame. She told me all these things because, she said, the talent that ran in our family's blood. And so it ran in mine. All yet my young life I had dreaded the thought Pray to the maker that I was not so cursed, but I knew otherwise. Deep in my heart I knew. When the Templars came to our home, I knew. The mage's tower was terrifying, full of secrets and danger. The Templars glared at me as if I could spring full into an ab abomination before their very eyes. My enchanters patiently attempted to teach me to marshal my will. Willpower. My only defense should as a demon attempt to enslave me, but it was no use. How many nights did I cry myself to sleep in that dark and lonely place? Then my heart harrowing came at last. My final test. Face a demon, they said, or submit to the right of tran tranquility. They would serve they were serving my connection to the fade, and thus I will never dream and no demon could ever touch me. But I would also be unable to do magic, and I would never feel an emotion ever again facing the demon with certain death, so my choice was easy. It is not so painful. Now I serve in other ways. We tranquil manage the archives. We run the tower, purchase the supplies, and maintain the accounts. Our conditions also allows us to use the magical element lyrium without ill effect, and thus we are 
the ones who enchant the magical items. We are merchants who sell these items to those the circle permits, and coin from those sales provides for provides the circle wealth. Thus we tranquil our vital. The young and the old may stare at me, ill at ease, but they will be worse off without me. They may think me a failure, but there is no horror for me now. I feel no fear of what I am. The shadows are merely shadows, and I am content. Eden the Meek, Tranquil of the Circle of Magi of Starkhaven, The Free Marches. Okay. And we gotta level up. Come on there, Cursor. Work with me. Perfect. All right. Up we go. Here we go. you say all right so there we go okay where are we at Liliana you got one more point before you can get the other good uh, bow. So, nine. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about that one. Let me see where I am. What do I have? I've got a good one too, so. Love them, but I hate them all at the same time. All right. Alistair, you're very equipped here. There's anything that I want to give you. You're good. And you're good. Okay. To camp we go, guys.
I lied to you, you know, about why I left Ole. Um, why? I didn't feel like talking about it then. What happened to me? Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. Hunted? For what for? I was framed. Betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. Mm. How'd she betray you? You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body. Sealed documents. Um, you opened them, didn't you? My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries. Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. Isn't that what bards do? Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orle. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life as bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries. It takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. What do you mean? I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. Who's they? The Orlesian guards. They captured me. Did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured. And at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. How unpleasant. The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. And so you came to Ferelden, to Lothary. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. Oh, thank you for trusting me with this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. Codex. Okay, let's see here. Um, I believe... This is what added. Her decision to join the Chantry was not merely the product of her disenchantment with life of the bard. Liliana was framed by a bard master and fled to escape execution as a traitor. Liliana takes care of, to honor the Lodoring cloister that she took that took her in and keeps symbols of Andrasse blessing close to her heart. Very good. Oop, flop. <laughs> Gotta love those moments. Let's see, anything to give you? Something I can help with? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind?
Um, why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. What happened to your mother? Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Do you remember nothing of your mother? Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. There we they are. were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. No, we're not gonna move on. I have a gift for you. Mm, flowers? Uh, thank you. They're very pretty. Smell them. These were her favorite. <sighs> I haven't seen these in such a long time. They smell just like mother used to. Thank you. Thank you so much for remembering. Wah wah. Wah. <laughs> okay. The Circle of Magi stands ready to assist, Grey Warden, as do the Templars of the Chantry. Um, do you need anything? There are always areas to improve on, Grey Warden. The most useful for my talents are runes. Okay. Yes. As you wish. Not quite there yet, are you, Stan? Unexpected. Thank you. You're welcome. Codex updated. Uh, Stan has an eye for paintings, an appreciation that might seem out of character, but is actually an extension of coronary discipline. He respects the art for careful composition, a skill that is much about where the brush stroke stops as where it begins. Very good. Mm. Oh, come on now. One moment, guys. Anyway, so talk to him. What's on your mind? Let's see. Are you feeling better now? Oh, yes, and thank you for asking. I'm feeling much better today. I like to make sure all my companions are well. Well, thank you for your kindness, my dear. It certainly warms these rickety old bones. Two. Oops. Let's see, is that right? Oh. Oh, I want to see where. Okay, you got advanced. Severin.
You have excellent taste. Thank you. I just wanted to give you something here. Okay, I'm going to back to win here quick. Oh, marvelous. Cool. Here I am. Hello. Care to answer some oh, questions? This should be good. Go ahead. Tell me a little bit about Antiva. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. Oh, where's my... there it is. Um, you don't like Ferelden? It is fine enough with its dogs and its mud. <laughs> the people are spirited, even if they can't tell the difference between an assassin and a mere killer. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? <laughs> of course, my mother was better than any gem. Oh, come on. <laughs> you have me there, indeed. I, for one, can make no such claim as I never laid eyes on the woman. <laughs> hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. Is that some kind of antrism? <laughs> it may as well like be. <laughs> but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. Sounds like you've been away from home forever. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in a store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? Your home is still there, Zevran. True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden? A woman who then spares my life. <laughs> I could not. How can you not love him? Oh, shameless hussy. <laughs> uh, you need to make the most of where you are. Quite right you are. I see the Grey Wardens do not recruit fools. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. <laughs> Plop. Your dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. <laughs> Good, he will fend our enemies with his stench. That may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Better you than me. Go ahead. Excellent. I will get my soaps, and the dog shall have his bath after supper. <laughs> Sometimes dogs need a certain bath. You'll be okay. Alright, save. Alright, Alistair. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. You have a friend outside the Grey Wardens? I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. Good to know. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret after all. But 
After I became a Great Warden, I did some checking, and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. That's wonderful news. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. If you want to, we can try. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. <laughs> I just want to level up some people here. Let's see what I got for you. I've got that, that for you for me? and that for you. This, this is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? I found it in Redcliffe Castle, in the study. Oh, the Arl's study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? Perhaps you mean more to him than you think. I guess you could be right. We never really talked that much. And then the way I left... Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this if he recovers from his... When he recovers, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. Of course I remember. You're special to me. Is this the part when the music starts and we begin dancing because I'm game? <laughs> Where's the minstrels? <laughs> you kind of ruined it there, man. <laughs> Here, look at this. Do you know what this is? That's a rose. I picked it in Lothering. I remember thinking... How could something so beautiful exist in a place with so much despair and ugliness? I probably should have left it alone, but I couldn't. The Darkspawn would come and their taint would just destroy it. So I've had it ever since. That's a nice sentiment. I thought that I might give it to you, actually. In a lot of ways, I think the same thing when I look at you. Oh, thank you, Alistair. That's a lovely thought. I'm glad you like it. I was just thinking, here I am doing all this complaining, and you haven't exactly been having a good time of it yourself. You've had none of the good experience of being a Grey Warden since you're joining. Not a word of thanks or congratulations. It's all been death and fighting and tragedy. I thought maybe I could say something. Tell you what a rare and wonderful thing you are to find amidst all this darkness. I can't help myself. So are we married now? <laughs> you won't <laughs> land me that easily, woman. I know I'm quite the prize after all. No need to start crying on me or anything. I guess it was... Uh, just a stupid impulse. I don't know. Was it the wrong one? No, it wasn't. Thank you, Alistair. I'm glad you like it. Now, if we could move right on past this awkward, embarrassing stage and get right to the steamy bits, I'd appreciate it. 
Sounds good. Off with your armor, then. Ha <laughs> ha Love cold. Damn, she saw right through me. <laughs> he definitely is. You're cute when you're bashful. I'll be... <laughs> I'll be standing over here <laughs> until the blushing stops. Just to be uh, safe. You know how it is. Uh-huh. Uh... Definitely cute. <laughs> Can't help it. We're putting it on. Don't care how much it's worth or anything in that general aspect. It shall be done. Okay, so let's throw this in. Got nothing to throw in there? No. Okay. Um, this one. Glittering away. Throw it. Okay. It speaks. I expected golems to be different. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, master, I exist to serve the master. I shall kill for the master and only for the master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. Are they dirty limericks? Mostly, they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? Being different isn't so bad. Did I say it was bad? Huh. It thinks I hang on its every word, waiting for approval. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. I agree. Being a golem would be handy. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other... functions. Walk underwater. Crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. <laughs> Alright, Sandal. Enchantment? Enchantment! Let's see what new we got. Frost. Slow. That works. Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps? A cheese knife? I'd like to see your wares, Bohan. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. With my discount. One moment here. I'm working. Can you... Mm. Sorry if I go quiet, guys. Whoops. And it's still not in there. I don't know.
Oh, my mods isn't working. It's making me very angry. Enchantment? Enchantment! If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. Enchantment? Enchantment! better. Alright. Another quick save here, guys. I await your command. So, life in the wilds must have been very lonely. At times, perhaps. A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, twas to the trees. That sounds wonderful. For a time. But one can only remain a child for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments, the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. 
It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. Can't imagine Flemeth was pleased. She was not. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. But you were just a child. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. Those are hard less, uh, harsh lessons to teach a child. Perhaps, but they were necessary still. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. We're gonna take over that. We can have that. Where are you, Shale? Okay. One more cell. And then we're off. Something you need? I'm sure either my boy or I can help you out. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. Alright guys, this is uh, where we'll end the episode, unless I think I can fit some more in, um, but we'll see you next time. Bye now.